all right then, you're planning to move abroad, so your universities are shortlisted, or your immigration papers are ready, or you have that job in hand. So we move to step two and you've realized that it is that you have to take the IELTS exam. So what is this IELTS exam? What is the format? How to prepare for it? And more important, do I even need to prepare for it? This video will answer all these questions and give you a helpful study timetable. All right, let's begin by talking about what is IELTS or as commonly pronounced the IELTS exam. So this is the International English Language Testing System. It's an international exam which is recognized worldwide and it's, a, it's an entire system which is based, uh, which is meant to test your English speaking skills. So what differentiates this exam from our general Indian exams? Let's talk about the good points first. Well, thankfully it is very convenient. It is standardized in the sense that it's fair. It will test you against the global standards of the of speaking English as a language. Now, let's understand what is this exam. If you want to study abroad in any country which has which uses English as its native language or let's say that the medium of instruction or communication is in English. So you would need to take an exam to prove your speaking skills. There are many exams in the market right now and IELTS is one of the best uh, ones. Why? Because it's very widely recognized. The second thing, um, what score do, would you need? So is there any passing or failing in this exam? Uh, not exactly. There's no pass or fail in the IELTS exam. The score that you need would depend on why you're going. So let's say if you're going for studies, your university would inform you what minimum score you need. And if you're going for immigration, every particular country, every immigration body has a different minimum score which is required. So I am not the correct person to be telling you what score do you need. In fact, it's the other way around you need to tell me what score you need. So comment down below whatever score it is that you're looking for. All right. Now this IELTS exam can have two different types. One is called academic and the second is called IELTS general. Which one do you need to take? Very simple. So let's say that you're going abroad for higher education, further education. What exactly comes in further education? This means that if you've completed your 12th grade, and if you're going abroad for further studies, undergraduation, post-graduation, PhD, diplomas. So anything which comes beyond the 12th grade, you would need to take the IELTS academic. Now, if you are going abroad for uh, immigration PR, for settling there, then you would need to take the IELTS general. So if you're going to Canada, UK, Australia, any of these countries for immigration purpose, you would need to take the general exam. How are both these tests different? I will come to that in a moment. Let's talk about what is there in the exam. So if you're going abroad, they need to check that you can speak, write, read, and also understand English, which is exactly the four modules of this exam. So the exam would begin with the listening uh, module, followed by reading, and then you'd be writing. All these three, would be held in the same on the same day in one go. Now, the fourth module IELTS speaking may or may not be held on the same day. So sometimes it could be held on the same day or a day prior after or even a week prior or after to your main LRW exam. Now, what is the difference in, as I said, uh, academic and general? So if you're taking the academic exam, that means you are going abroad for studies, which means that it is slightly analytical in nature. And IELTS general is, I could put it uh, in this way, that it's easier uh, overall. It has a lot of language which you would use in day-to-day -day life, right? Now, uh, let's talk about all four modules. Let's begin by talking about the listening module and what to do. Before I talk about that, uh, how can you take the exam in India? So this exam in India is conducted by IDP only. And a very convenient way of taking this exam nowadays would be the computer delivered method, which I would definitely recommend in case you have that question. It's a lot more convenient and user friendly as compared to the paper based test. 
All right. Now coming back to all four modules and beginning with our first module, the listening module. What all does it encompass? So your listening exam would be the first thing that you sit for on your IELTS day, and it has forty questions. Each question has one mark. The entire audio plays for approximately thirty minutes, and it's divided into four sections. These four sections get progressively more difficult. The audio will only play once, and thankfully there is no negative marking. So my first tip is never leave any question blank. Even if you don't know the answer, make an educated guess. A lot of times our educated estimates are absolutely correct. So never leave that question blank. The second tip that I would give you is please use a pencil only. You're not allowed to use a pen here, and. The third tip is use all capitals for writing all your listening answers, right? Okay. Now let's understand what tips can I give you for your meticulous preparation of your listening module. So the first thing is get into the habit of listening to different accents. Thankfully, Indians are really good when it comes to understanding the American accent. So focus on the other ones which may sound unfamiliar to you. for example the british or the american sorry australian accent that would definitely help you in preparing for the exam a lot better the next thing is the questions in listening are mostly in order right so read the questions beforehand you would have a pause in between that would be good enough time to read the question beforehand read the question and try to predict what the answer can be prediction is the key that really helps your mind psychologically prepare for the answer sometimes even synonyms could be used so if you're predicting your ears would be primed for listening catching to those synonyms moving to the next module which is reading let's look at what the reading module has now there is a slight difference in the academic reading exam and the general reading exam what is that difference the difference is only where the passages are picked up from where they're extracted from So in academic you would have passages picked from scientific books, scientific journals, magazines, newspapers whereas in general the passages would be picked from uh, areas which you might encounter in your day to day life which would be again newspapers, advertisements, lifestyle magazines. So that is the main difference which also means that IELTS general uses um easier vocabulary when it comes to the reading section now reading module for academic is divided into three sections each section has one passage and uh, the passages do get slightly longer as they progress so manage your time accordingly what that means is you should be spending 15 minutes on the first passage 20 on the next and finally 25 on the last one which totals up to exactly 60 minutes and that leaves you with no extra time to transfer your answers so please continue transferring your answers as and when you answer a question that makes sure that you are not uh, left with unanswered questions at the end which you are in a hurry to copy all right now how many different types of questions can there be so the answer is there can be around 9 to 10 different types of questions and this is why you should be preparing for the IELTS exam irrespective of how good your uh, language skills are just preparing for the exam could definitely result in an increment of your band score by at least one band definitely right so yes you do need IELTS preparation even if your uh, skills are really good all right now uh, again in the reading module as well thankfully there is no negative marking so please do not leave an answer blank make a guess if you have to uh, you should familiarize yourself with the different reading techniques which are out there for example skimming scanning deducing meaning of uncommon vocabulary surveying right so familiarizing yourself with these techniques and using them would definitely save a lot of your time so you only have 60 minutes which includes copying answers looking for answers reading the passages so yes uh, you should know what these techniques are and the biggest tip that i can give you in reading is stop reading the passage there is absolutely no need to read the entire passage to be able to answer those questions so that is where you're probably losing a lot of your time please don't do that 
all right moving to the next module of the day which would be writing the writing exam has two tasks again there is a slight difference in general and academic what is that difference that is task number one task number one for general is again easy it's something that you do in your day-to-day -day life and i'm sure you've done that at least once which is letter writing task one for academic students since they're going to study abroad is slightly different they need to write a report they would be given pictorial data let's say in the form of a line graph bar graph pie chart table diagram process you need to understand analyze that data and write a formal report of at least 150 words now task two is absolutely the same for both of you uh, you need to write an essay and this essay needs to be written in a formal style again uh, you should ideally write 250 words that's the minimum word count there is no maximum word count as such so there's no upper limit that's given uh, and now coming to the essays there can be four different types of essays that you could get uh, either you could have an opinion essay a discussion essay advantage disadvantage essay or a problem solution essay you may have heard these essays being phrased in different manners but no matter the wordings overall these are the four main types of essays which can be there all right uh, moving forward to the last module which we have which is speaking uh, it has three parts the speaking exam it's absolutely the same for both general and um, academic students and what you need to do in part one it's going to be a brief introduction and interview so all you need to do is answer a few questions from which the examiner asks you these are going to be about you and very familiar topics for example let's say do you work or do you study what are your hobbies what do you do in your leisure time do you like singing what kind of books do you read uh, what kind of music do you like listening to what genre of music do you like and uh, finally let's say talk about your friends about your house your country so all familiar topics the answers to these you already have so this is the best time to flaunt your fluency to overcome any nerves that you have this will last for around um, four to five minutes this will be followed by part two which lasts for three to four minutes now task two is also called as your cue card task what does this have you will be given a piece of paper which has three bullet points you need to read the cue card and you will be given a minute to win it as they say so you'll have a minute to prepare a few notes you can make notes in this time and after one minute you need to speak uninterrupted it's going to be a monologue so you need to speak for approximately two minutes when i say approximately two minutes i mean as close to two as possible so definitely not less and if it's more than two minutes that's all right the examiner would stop you which is a standard procedure so please don't panic moving forward to the third part which is a longer discussion which is called a two-way discussion right so here what will happen is the examiner would in continuation to part two relating to the topic of part two ask you a few questions these questions would definitely be related to part two however they would be abstract in nature which means not directly related to uh, the topic that you spoke about here you need to answer around uh, four to eight questions depending on how well you expand them and this will last for around four to five minutes again so overall your entire speaking exam would go on for 11 to 14 minutes now tips for speaking uh, speaking is an output exercise which means it only improves if the input is good so if you feel that you're stuck at a level and no matter what you're being nervous and you're unable to um, go above that level that is probably happening because the input of English a it wasn't enough or B it wasn't regular so you need to be regularly in touch with the language to be able to have a fluent control over it right so do that make sure you read the newspaper 10 minutes a day not just to improve your reading but in fact to remove to improve your speaking it does impact your speaking module so a student who reads daily has a clear um, advantage over somebody who does not even if it's just 10 minutes a day that's tip number one tip number two um, practice a few topics beforehand that would give you an added advantage that would give you the boost you need it gives you a lot of confidence you are already prepared and who knows you may get the topic you had prepared on 
right? So that was about the speaking module. Finally, coming to the most important question, do I even need preparation? Only two people can answer this question for you. I'm not one of them. One of those people is God and the second one is a liar. So if you need preparation or not, nobody can answer that for you. You need to take a mock test. Take a mock test, check what is my uh, required score, how far am I from it, right? So let's say that your required band is seven and you get a band six. So you know how far am I, just one band. That means just rehearsing, just revising, knowing the techniques would get me to band seven. However, let's say that you're getting a band five. That means there's a longer gap, right? So that means you need a longer preparation. So yes, that would help you. So you can go ahead, take your mock test. There are a lot of sites nowadays which are, um, you know, helping you with free mocks, both paper-based and even nowadays you have computer delivered uh, mock tests free of cost. So go ahead, take a mock test. And if you do feel your band is not required or not matching, uh, you know, your minimum band, please feel free to come back, register in our courses at Leap Scholar. Why Leap Scholar? Simply not because we prepare you. A lot of people have preparation courses, but Leap Scholar has speaking and writing mock tests. So this is something that is not available at other places. You need to understand what what level of speaking or writing you are at and what level you need. So that definitely is the biggest advantage that preparing can give you. Knowing the techniques and knowing the format can definitely help you level up your band. Thank you so much for watching this video and do not forget to like and subscribe to this channel so that Leaf Scholar can keep providing you affordable quality education. Thank you. Bye-bye.